Thank you for joining us for the second installment of Technical Assistance Videos Introducing Potential Applicants to the U.S. Department of Labor Employment and Training Administration's Funding Opportunity Announcement, the Workforce Opportunity for Rural Communities, referenced here as DOL, ETA, FOA, and Work. In this video, I'll be outlining Sections 1, 2, and 3 of the Work FOA, including Funding Opportunity Description, Award Information, and Eligibility Information. This video provides an overview of the WORK program to help you understand its purpose, funding availability, and eligibility requirements. So let's get started. The WORK initiative is administered by the U.S. Department of Labor's Employment and Training Administration in partnership with the Delta Regional Authority and Appalachian Regional Commission. The purpose of this program is to demonstrate the alignment of comprehensive and regionally driven approaches to addressing economic distress and the necessary workforce development activities to ensure a workforce capable of succeeding in current and future job opportunities. The WORK initiative grants take a long-term view toward assisting eligible communities in diversifying their economies by investing in local strategies developed by regional partners. This long-term view also acknowledges the impact of the opioid crisis and the significant challenges it presents to a community's workforce. To address these challenges, ETA encourages applicants to include within their applications strategies that address the employment and training needs of individuals affected by substance abuse disorders in their communities. The goal of this grant opportunity is to create economic prosperity and gainful employment opportunities for eligible residents in impacted ARC and DRA regions, enabling them to remain and thrive in their communities. Successful applications will address these objectives in your proposed project. Objective 1. Implement innovative, sustainable service delivery strategies to address economic and workforce related impacts within each of the regions. Objective 2. Provide or facilitate the provision of new or enhanced training, job placement, and support activities to the following eligible participants. Dislocated workers, including displaced homemakers, new entrants in the workforce, and incumbent workers, including eligible individuals within those cohorts that may be affected by substance abuse disorder, for example, opioids, stimulants, cocaine, and other substances, who reside in the DRA and ARC regions. Objective 3. Align and integrate workforce development activities with existing state, regional, or community economic development strategies. Objective 4. Develop and expand partnerships, including industry partnerships that build and sustain capacity, maximize available resources, and establish community-based approaches for addressing workforce challenges and industry needs in the DRA and ARC regions. Objective 5. Provide or facilitate delivery of support services to assist employers and industry in meeting workforce challenges and industry needs in the DRA and ARC regions. Funding will be provided in the form of a grant. The Department of Labor expects the availability of approximately $29.2 million, and applicants may apply for an amount ranging from $150,000 up to $1.5 million. Of the total funding available, the DRA and ARC regions will each receive $14.6 million. DOL encourages applications from smaller entities as well as from entities seeking smaller funding amounts. The performance period for these grants will be no more than 36 months from an anticipated start date of September 30, 2020. This performance period includes all necessary implementation and startup activities. The following organizations are eligible to apply. State, county, and city governments, special district governments, regional organizations, state or local workforce development boards, independent school districts, public or state-controlled institutions of higher education, Indian or Native American tribal governments, federally recognized and other than federally recognized, Indian or Native American tribally designated organizations, public or Indian housing organizations, nonprofit organizations with or without IRS 501c3 status, private institutions of higher education, Hispanic serving institutions, historically black colleges and universities, known as HBCUs, and tribally controlled colleges and universities, known as TCCUs. 
Among the eligible applicants previously described, the applicant agency or organization must also demonstrate collaboration or engagement with at least two employer or industry partners and should also partner with other organizations serving the economic and workforce development goals and other needs of the community the application proposes to serve. Such partnerships expand project capacity to reach and serve grant participants by leveraging and building upon existing community efforts, resources, and networks. Partnerships also help to sustain the delivery of effective career and training services to address workforce needs. Applicants are also required to demonstrate that they will serve eligible participants who live in the DRA and or ARC regions. Applicants may train eligible participants for jobs outside of either of the regions, so long as the applicant clearly demonstrates that employment in these occupations will not require participants to relocate outside the region. Such jobs must clearly align with the overall intent of the grant application and the statement of need. This program does not require cost sharing or matching funds. Including such funds is not one of the application screening criteria and applications that include any form of cost sharing or match will not receive additional consideration during the review process. Instead, the agency considers any resources contributed to the project beyond the funds provided by the agency as leverage resources. We recommend using this checklist as a guide when preparing your application package to ensure that the application has met all of the screening criteria. This checklist is shown under Application Screening Criteria on page 8 of the FOA. We urge you to use this checklist to ensure that your application contains all required items. If your application does not meet all of the screening criteria, it will not move forward through the merit review process and will be deemed incomplete. Applicants may choose to submit the proposal summary, attachment A, in lieu of the project narrative. Only one application from each organization will be considered for funding. If multiple applications are received from the same organization, only the most recently received application will be considered. While only one application per organization will be considered, applicant organizations can be included as a partner on another organization's application. Applicants must propose a project that serves individuals in one or more of these categories new entrants to the workforce, dislocated workers, and or incumbent workers. Within these categories, you may serve a wide range of individuals such as high school or post-secondary students, individuals requiring adult basic and other education programs, individuals with disabilities, veterans, individuals with limited English proficiency, and individuals impacted by substance abuse disorder. The definitions for each of the categories are as follows. New entrants to the workforce. DOL considers new entrants to the workforce as those who have never worked before or those out of the workforce for a significant period of time and are re-entering the workforce. For example, this may include but is not limited to the long-term unemployed and formerly incarcerated individuals. Also eligible, consistent with federal and state wage and employment laws, are youth enrolled in their junior or senior year of high school and who could be employed before or within six months after the end of the grant life cycle, and also youth who have dropped out of school and are seeking their first full-time employment. Dislocated workers. This term refers to individuals who are terminated or laid off or have received a notice of termination or layoff from employment, or were self-employed but are now unemployed. Incumbent workers. This term refers to currently employed individuals who need training to secure full-time employment, advance in their careers, or retain their current positions. Allowable grant activities include training and work-based learning models, other employment-related activities, innovative service delivery strategies, participant support services, employer support services, and purchasing equipment and making renovations. Now, let's cover each of these in the following slides. Training and work-based learning models. Workforce training strategies must align with the target community or region's strategic plan or economic development priorities. Some of the allowable training and learning approaches include, but are not limited to, traditional classroom training, work-based learning such as apprenticeships, customized training programs, incumbent worker training, on-the-job training, internships, or other work experiences. 
These may occur before or after layoff in order to facilitate reemployment. Other employment related activities. Some of the allowable employment related activities include, but are not limited to, employability training such as punctuality, personal maintenance, and professional conduct, in depth assessment and evaluation to identify employment barriers and development of individual employment plans and career planning that includes a career pathway approach, job coaching, and job matching services. Innovative service delivery strategies that address economic and workforce related impacts and aim to overcome existing challenges within the DRA or ARC regions might include application of new business models, products, services, or technology, such as expanding broadband access, mobile service units equipped with technology-enabled solutions, industry-specific bridging programs, development of training programs that support those impacted by substance abuse disorder, or developing new or enhancing existing partnership strategies for sustainable job growth. Participant support services. Support services are necessary activities or resources that enable eligible individuals to participate in career and training services or to gain or retain employment. Applicants may propose to offer support services to participants directly or through partner organizations based upon the specific needs and focus of the project plan. Generally, customized support service strategies meet the specific needs of an individual and may include, but are not limited to, transportation or child and dependent care assistance, stipends, wages, or other incentives, equipment, including books, computers, and tablets, payments and fees for employment and training related applications, tests, and certifications, and substance abuse disorder recovery workforce strategies. Applicants proposing to include stipends or wages for participants exceeding 20% of the total grant award must receive prior approval from the grant officer. Employer Support Services Applicants are encouraged to provide services to employers, particularly small and medium-sized employers. Efforts may focus on individual employers or have an industry-based approach for clusters or sectors, including but not limited to worksite peer coaching, counseling, and mentoring, creating, expanding, or enhancing apprenticeships, including subsidies of apprentice and intern wages, customized training, and school-to-work type activities. In addition to meeting the workforce needs of these employers, applicants are encouraged to consider and incorporate, where feasible, other roles that employers may play in grant activities. Purchasing equipment and making renovations. Capital expenditures, such as the purchase of equipment or capital improvements, are allowable with prior approval from the grant officer, provided they address the employment and training needs of the community served by the proposed project. Possible allowable capital improvements include, but are not limited to, improvements to buildings or equipment that would materially increase their value or useful life, including the cost to put the asset or improvement in place. Minor alterations, renovations, or rearrangements of buildings, facilities, or equipment, if specific to the project, are also allowable with prior approval from the grant officer. Allowable costs also include leasing space that is used for the grant participant education, training, and related activities, as well as the altering or renovating of such facilities. For technical questions about the funding opportunity announcement, please contact Jennifer McHenry, Grants Management Specialist at the Department of Labor. For more information and questions related to your project, please contact Ari Kangalis, Program Manager at the Delta Regional Authority. That brings us to the end of our examination and breakdown of Sections 1, 2, and 3 of the Work FOA. An extensive list of resources about the Work Initiative and DRA's Workforce Development Programs can be found at dra.gov workforce. For more information, please email us at workforce at dra.gov.